meeting the requirements from the course. The first is multiplayer. I have another instance running on my Nexus 7. So we start the server. There's the player controlled by the keyboard input on the computer. I'll refresh the hosts and run join the server from my Nexus 7. And there he is. And I'm controlling this guy on the touch screen on my device. And this one from the keyboard. Touch screen. So the network uh, multiplayer does work. Accelerometer, it does not work on the laptop, but it will work on the device. You can control the hockey puck by tilting the Nexus 7. Um, old school Nintendo ice hockey style. GPS, it doesn't ping continuously, only when you press refresh it gives you a snapshot of the latitude and longitude. Obviously there's no uh, GPS on my laptop, but it does work on the device. And even if you're not moving, every time you press refresh you will see a new timestamp. So you'll know that it does work. Camera was working before on my laptop, but it's not anymore, but it does work on the device. Um, when you hit play, it'll start a continuous feed on this block, and then there will an option will show up to take a picture. And at that point, it will transfer the image to here, to this block, while continuing the video. Just make sure you hit stop before you hit return. Otherwise, it'll crash because the webcam is still going when you try to exit the scene. All right, and that's how that works. Now to the scripts. Uh, the main menu, it's just a bunch of on GUIs. Here's the title. Uh, game modes is a enumerated data type. With You can either play multiplayer, accelerometer, GPS, or camera capture mode. And if you click on the multiplayer button, it will set the game mode to multiplayer and load scene one which is the multiplayer scene. Likewise, accelerometer, GPS, and camera capture. Um, setting the orientation to landscape permanently. And on key down, you have to quit the application to load the new scenes. Network Manager, this is for multiplayer. Um, spawn Player creates a new, uh, instantiates the player prefab, which is the guy with glasses that you saw. There's the join server function on connect to server. It's called after we join the server, and the player is spawned, and it gives a little message. There's uh, the refresh host list. Uh, once the host list is received, this on master server event um, is called. Here's the start server function. Um, type name, game name is my room, which is Mike's room, as you can see from the demo. On server initialized, successfully spawn the player. Um, on GUI, if to, when the gives you the buttons to start the server or refresh the host list. Um, otherwise, Uh, not otherwise, but then here is the box with the game name, which would be Mike's Room, is called when the server is available. And that's about it for that. There's my player, that guy with glasses. Um, this is a lot like uh, my first 2D game in Unity. I incorporated a lot of the gameplay mechanics. Input movement. Um, here's the touch screen controls. The moving can be either one or negative one. Likewise, if you're using the keyboard, you can have either a one or a negative one for moving. 
And then if moving is not zero, meaning it's a one or a negative one, then the force x is the speed that we declared at top times moving. So you're either moving in a positive or negative direction, one or a negative one. And likewise, um, scale the character either one or negative one, so he's looking left or looking right depending on which way you're moving. And then add the x-force and the y-force is zero because we're only going left and right in this demo. And that input movement function I just described, only you can control it if the network view is yours. So both controls don't control both players at the same time. I use the accelerometer. It's really easy. I just attach this script to the hockey puck. Um, the direction in the Y is the acceleration Y times the Y force, which I think I hard coded that on the Unity screen to be 25. Same thing for X. It's the X acceleration times the X force, which is 25, and then add the force to the hockey puck. GPS location. So you have your get data, and this is what does all the GPS checking. Initializes the server, checks for a failed, and then if everything is good and it wants the data, it says go to true, and then stops the uh, location finding. So that's why you get one ping every time you hit refresh because on GUI here is the refresh button which is always on but here is this part is inside of Go. So when Go is true that's when it prints the GPS data, latitude, longitude, timestamp, converts it to a string and puts it on the screen. Um, that's that. Return GUI. This is um, that enumerated data type in main menu. It checks that. So if main menu game mode is uh, multiplayer, then it prints multiplayer on the top of the scene. Otherwise accelerometer, GPS, the camera capture, so I have this one script attached to every scene which gives the header name and it also puts the return button on the top left of every screen too. So I thought that was pretty clever that how one script was able to handle kind of the you know transitioning for each of the scenes. And if you do press return go back to the main menu scene and same quit the application as well. Here's the webcam, um, just some basic Unity um, functions. Start the webcam, render it on the webcam texture which is that middle block and then play the webcam. So that's played at start and here you have your post texture which is the game object where the picture is posted and that's in this take snapshot function um, with you have your texture 2D and you get this get pixels and set pixels and load it to snap and apply it and then you just take that snapshot and render it on the post texture which is the cube on the right. There's your on GUI so if the webcam is not playing you go down here and the only available button is the play button. Like I said, it didn't work on this demo I showed you, but it does work when you test my app on the hardware. So you click play, and the play button goes away, and then you're left with pause, picture, which takes the snapshot and runs the take snapshot function, and stop, which does webcam stop. And so far, pause and stop kind of visually do the same thing. But if you press pause and then click the return button, it'll crash because the webcam is still on technically, right? So you have to press stop and then return to go back to the main menu from the webcam menu. Update. That's that. Um, I don't know what that is. And that is my program. Thank you very much.